All right, if you have your Bibles with you this morning, you can be turning to the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 6. And uh, while you're turning there, uh, be prayerful about the outreach of the church and uh, things that we've uh, been thinking about and have on our heart uh, that we would be um, um, attentive to the Lord's will. Daniel chapter 6 in the very first verse. Daniel chapter 6 in the very first verse. The Bible says it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom a hundred and twenty princes which should which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these presidents of whom Daniel was, and over these three presidents who Daniel was first, and the princes might have account, might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was a prefer preferred above the presidents and princes, being excellent spirit, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could not find none occasion nor fault for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then these men, then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, Live forever. And all the, all the presidents of the kingdom and governors and the princes and the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days, save for thee, O king, we sh he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, Establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the laws of the Medes and Persians, which alter it not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went down into the, his house and his window being open in his chambers toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before God as he did aforetime. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for an opportunity to meet with your people here today. God, we give you praise for that. We pray for help, Lord, that we might preach your word according to your will and according to what it says. Lord, and not what we think, but according to the truth of your scripture. This morning, we pray for your guidance and your help as we lead the church. God, we need it. Uh, most of all, Lord, we pray that you fill this place this morning with the Holy Ghost. Lord, that you'd shake your people up, that the men of God here would be, uh, be troubled about the situation in our land and in our hearts and in our homes, Lord, and that you'd cause us to be stirred up uh, with power. Lord, we pray that women uh, would be yielded into a spirit of prayer and support to their husbands this morning. God, we pray for that. Lord, we pray for our nation, and we know it's all under your hands. We give you the praise and the glory for it. For it's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Now, I'll be preaching this morning on the thought, another day of service, another day in the kingdom of God, another day where we do and we are obedient to the will of God. Now we see, we're going to see where uh, Daniel gets into something of a situation and he gets into that situation because he's faithful to God. Now the, the health and wealth teachers that are out there today will uh, tell you the more that you're faithful to God, the more that you'll be enjoying, but that is not true. Now you may enjoy a closeness unto God, but this, uh, but this world's going to hate you. If, you, if you're close and driven unto the Lord, it is not pleasing to this world. It'll make people upset. And listen, the more worldly they are, the more they're going to be upset with you. And that is the, uh, that, that is the nature of the service of the man of God. 
So what are you going to do on a typical day? And you think about yourself. I don't know what your typical day is. I don't know exactly how your day is carried out. I just know about mine. And I've often wondered on a typical day, am I in the will of God? And on a typical day, could I be branded a Christian by what I do and what I say and where I go and what I do and what I wear? Could I be branded a Christian uh, on those standards? And so we find that Daniel was such a man. Now, in the first verse, it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. Now, I want you to see that throughout history, God has used men uh, almost, almost invariably, whether that they're saved or lost, they go under his power. And a lot of people don't get that. See, the Bible says this, for this reason I have raised up Pharaoh. From the birth of Pharaoh until the day that he stood in full defiance against God, that's the reason he was made. That's the reason he was created. And sometimes I wonder uh, uh, myself if uh, what exactly what was my reason to be in this place. So the the arrangement of the kingdom was authored by God and brought into existence by this Darius, uh, verse two. And over these, meaning the 120 princes, and over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give an account to them and the king should have no damage or loss. Now, what it was, prior to this, there were some people that were unsuited governors and what they were doing, like most crooked politicians, they were scraping a little off the top from themselves. And that's exactly what uh, Darius wanted to end and he put these people in charge. Now, listen, the ones that got upset were upset because their means were ended. Uh, see, they had a man that was in charge that was an honest man, and that was Daniel, and whatever they had been skimming was gone. And listen, when you, you want to get in, you want to get somebody uh, mad real quick, you get into their pocketbook. And that's exactly what Daniel did. And and, and they, they saw kind of their means was gone, and, and the reason that they perceived it was gone is because of Daniel. Uh, verse 3, then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents. In other words, you had the 120 uh, princes, you had the three presidents, and now he's even preferred above them. Daniel was in complete charge of the treasury, what came and what went. Now Daniel is above the whole thing, and that's when people begin to, begin to get upset. Verse 4, then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel. Now listen, I want you to get this if you don't get anything else out of this this morning. Uh, the devil is out there always trying to find occasion against you. He's trying to find an opportunity to bring you down. He's finding it out there trying to find an opportunity to destroy your testimony. He wants to bring you down like dogs, like the rest of this earth. And he's always out there, and that's always his attempt. It's always been his attempt, always will be. And so we find that the devil uses these individuals to try to bring Daniel down. In the second part of verse Four, the Bible says, but they could not find none occasion nor fault for as much as he was faithful. <laughs> what, what, what a wonderful thing <laughs> if somebody checked you out for four or five weeks and said, listen, all I can say is he's faithful. All I can say is that he's consistent. All I can say is he's still doing the stuff. That was the only thing that they could come up and trump on Daniel. Neither was their error or fault found in him. Verse 5. Then these men, uh, then said these men, we shall not find any occasion, occasion against this Daniel, except we find it in, against him concerning the law of his God. Now, after this assessment, 
they came to this conclusion, unless we can get something on his service to God, we're not going to get anything else. Now, can you be, imagine being spied out by the imps of the devil, Satan himself, and all that they could come up with, listen, if we take him down, we're going to have to take him down on his relationship with God. Yeah. That, that, that's amazing to me. You know what? What I am fearful and afraid of, that's not necessarily what they'd come up with on me. We can take him down by his pocketbook. We can take him down by his children. We can take him down by, by, the, uh, by his wife. We, we got other options here, but all that they could find at the end of the day is he loves God. He serves God. He desires to be in his will. He desires to follow after it. If God says it and he believes it, that's all we can come up with. What a wonderful testimony to the life of Daniel. Down there as a prison, as a prisoner, as a slave, and still serving God. Now, I want you to remind you, uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, that was Daniel's understudies. That was his students. Mm -hmm. And the very ones that says, all we want is some mush to eat. We don't want this filth. See, have you ever thought about well, how, how diet, literally physical diet, impacts your life? Now, if I went by both diets I'm supposed to be on, I'd pretty much be down to bark. Uh, and... Uh, but, you know, I've often thought, well, if I just put my mind to it, how would I feel if I was on the right diet? How, how, how would that feel to my body? And, and, and so, uh, what we lot of time need to do is just be on the right spiritual diet. And it's right there in your lap. It's right before you. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's preaching. It's reading. It's studying the Word of God. And, and so we find that Daniel was one of these that was strong in the spirit because he was strong in the word of God. And that's what we need today. We need men who are strong and willing to say, hey, I'm going to continue to serve the Lord. Verse 6, so they got this one thing against him. Then said, the, then these presidents and the princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. Now, listen, you watch when people start patting you on the back and telling you how great you are and how, what a wonderful pastor you are and what a great preacher you've been down through the years. Listen, it's the flesh, the flesh's natural means to like bragging. Oh, yeah. So when they came in there, oh, Darius, live forever. Man, they was buttering him up, and he was too stupid not to see it. See, we need to be very cautious about that. Uh, when people come our way and say, woo, woo, and stuff like that, just be sure. <laughs> because you know what? When people really love the Lord, they're going to have the spiritual sense enough to say, blessed be the name of the Lord. They're not going to be interested in what you, how great you are. And, and, and so we find then that was the situation here. They were buttering, buttering Darius up. Verse 7, all the, print, all the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes and counselors and captains have consulted together to establish a royal salute, uh, a royal statute, a uh, statute to make a firm decree that whoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days, say it be for thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of the lions. Now, I, I want you to see that the government uh, was being manipulated against God's people. And listen, we live in a day and age today where the government is being manipulated against God's people. Now, me and some of the brethren would talk about it uh, um, before church, and, you know, it's out of control, carrying these stupid statues being torn down. Listen, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Because you know what? Out here in Dover, Tennessee, when people run by this little building, there's a lot of them out there. That's an offense, I'm 
see what I'm saying? Uh, I can't stand what those people believe. And you know what? It won't take very long to bring her down. Right. Like I said, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's more coming. And, and, and so we find that, that this decree creates a situation for Daniel. Am I going to serve or, I'm, or am I going to cave in? That's a determination, is it not? Now, in, in, in some, and just to give you an example, uh, in some states, they make homeschooling laws so strict that you almost can't do it. Now, praise God, Tennessee's a, a looser than most, but they got you where they want you. What if they decreed there is no more homeschooling? What are you going to do? It, it, becomes, it comes then that you have to make a choice, right? Now, I don't remember this, and, uh, but mom remembers when they actually made the law that people had to go to school. Children, I mean. And way back in the hills of, uh, of Carlisle, way back, uh, it was the Anderson family. They were Norwegian. Uh, uh, mom knew all their children after they had to start coming to school. But the closest school was Carlisle, and they walked almost seven miles to get to the school. But see, uh, the governor had issued a decree. And it was followed. So when the government issues a, de a decree that's against what we believe, what are we going to do? See, when it, when it happens, it's too late to plan. Mm -hmm. So you have to you have to be ready, kind of when the day comes. And listen, oh, Daniel was ready. He knew it was coming. He knew how they hated him. They he knew it, they hated his honesty. And so in verse eight. Uh, now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius, sign the writing and the decree. <laughs> Only thing I can say there is read it before you sign it. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, have you ever thought about what you were committing to unawares? Talk about what, what agreement, what agreement you're contributing to uh, every day, and maybe affecting you spiritually, and you don't even think about it. Listen, we don't need to be involved in all that mess. We really don't. And, and, and so we find then that uh, Darius did exactly what they were coaxing him into, and when the government had changed their uh, their idea concerning. Uh, what religion, what praise was about, verse 10. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house. Now listen, don't get the idea that he was tuck tailing and running. This is what he always did. This is what his prayer time was about. This was his prayer place was in his house. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows Open, uh, being opened in his chambers toward Jerusalem, which was to the east. And he kneeled down upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks to God as he, afore, as he did a fourth time. Now, I want you to see two things about this. First of all, he didn't put on a show. This had been his behavior all along. He didn't change it. He wasn't in your face about it. He served him and praised him just like he always had. So that he faced there toward the east. He got down like this. Blessed be the name of the Father, the Lord God of heaven. Thank you for your protection and your guidance today, just like he always does. And see, he wouldn't let uh, he wouldn't let the law of the land interfere with his relationship with the Almighty. And we need to be in the very same situation. We do not need to let the law uh, of man interfere with our relationship with Christ. And more than that, just what the world has to offer us does not need to interfere with our relationship with the Almighty. And so he did. And he did a four time. Verse 11. 
Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication, which is praise and glory and honor before his God. And they came near and spake unto the king concerning the king's decree. Again, whatever you sign, you be careful. And has thou not made a decree that every man should that should shall ask a petition of any god or man within 30 days, say thee, O king, shall be cast into the dens of the lions? And the king answered and said, This thing is true according to the laws of the Medes and the Persians, which alter it not. Now I want you to see uh, in the end of verse 11 that he says, Yeah, it's true according to the laws of the Medes and Persians. Listen, there's a law that's much higher than the U.S. Constitution. Mm -hmm. There's a law that's much high, higher than the speed limit through Doe. There's a law that's authored only by God and with God and through God and for God. And that's the ultimate law. Um, see, what's going to happen in these next few months is it's going to be decision-making time. Are you going to go with the law of man? Or are you going to go with the law of God? That, that, that will be our ultimate decision, will it not? And, and, and so we find here that, uh, that Daniel, already spiritually prepared, went with God, and then they bring this law up against him. Verse 13, Then answered they and said before the king, That Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. Now I want you to see, uh, first of all, that they were still watching Daniel. They were still observing him. They were still looking at him. They were still saying what he was going to do. You know what? The world is watching you. <laughs> the Lord God of heaven is watching you too. And he's seeing everything you do. All your little thoughts up here. He's seeing what's going on all the time, every day. You know what? That's quite an humbling thing for me. When I think sometimes uh, my mind gets away with, uh, with me on things it ought not to do, ought not to be studying about, my God is there in the middle of it. And, and, and so we find as the Lord's people that uh, we ought not to be in that situation, but often we find uh, that we are. Verse 14. Then when the king heard these words, was sore displeased with himself. <laughs> Been there, done that, hadn't you? Just, man, what did I do then? That was so stupid. But see, this is the thing, uh, and that's where we want to be careful of our actions and our words. Once it's done, it's done. You can't take it back. You know what? You stick a gun to somebody's head and pulls the trigger, there's no bringing that back. No. And the very same thing is, is what you say with your big mouth. Mm. Once you do it, it's done, right? Mm. And, and so we see then, as the Lord's people, that we need to be more moderate and considerate when we when we begin to say something, because it may, like, like again, Darius, come back to haunt us. Was sore displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him, and he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Now, I want you to see what it doesn't really give the actions that uh, Darius did to take place, but he was working and petitioning and, and trying to do something on Daniel's behalf. Now, that sounds good, and I believe if he had got some kind of decree through and freed Daniel, he would have done it. But listen, uh, see, God on this day, just a typical day, he had different plans. You know what? If God had delivered Daniel by, by Darius, that would have been a miracle. But see, when he, when, he, when he delivered him by something that was no less than a great miracle, what, what more praise comes to God? Who would have got the praise if Darius had got that legislation through? 
Darius. Right? And so we see then uh, what would look like catastrophe to us was actually a good thing and was an exciting thing. And, and it didn't upset Daniel because all praise then come to his God. Then the man, uh, uh, verse uh, 15, then these men assembled unto the king and unto the, uh, uh, unto the king, king, O king, the law of the Medes and Persians, that, that, that no degree nor statute which the king established shall be changed. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king said unto him, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. Now, I want you to see two statements in that, uh, two, two proclamations. Daniel, I can't do it for you. Now, see, so there'll be times in your life when the very best of friends come by and say, you know what, there's nothing more in there. There'll be times when the doctor looks you eye to eye, shakes his head and says, I'm done. See, what, what would horrify most of us on a, a typical day like that ought to be a time of praise and worship. Because then, it, and, and can you imagine an infidel like Darius saying, your God is able to do this. That alone is a great testimony that uh, the leader of a heathen, ungodly nation saying, I know your God's able. See, this situation was created so that the Lord God might be magnified and might be lifted up even more than usual. It was all for his praise. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of the lions. And the king spake and said unto Daniel, My God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. And a stone was brought. And they laid it, lay, and laid it upon the mouth of the, line, of, the, of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose not be changed concerning Daniel. Now, after this great statement of faith, see, this is where, you notice through this, Daniel don't say anything. You know what, I think we've been stopping. This is not right. This is not fair. I was just protecting the king's money. But now Daniel never raises a voice. Who does that remind you of? Lord Jesus, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. He never said a word at his own trial. I said, are you king, the king of Jews? And he said, you said it. <laughs> and so Daniel doesn't say anything, but we find this, uh, this heathen king coming to his defense. And then so much faith did uh, Darius have, they rolled that stone into place and he initialed it, <laughs> signed off on it, and with full confidence that God was going to be able to deliver him. See, um, <laughs> I've often wondered how much can we sign off on our faith and, and say, this is what I believe in, and this is where I stand, and this is where I'll, where I'll remain. That's exactly what uh, Darius was doing. Verse 18, then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and sleep went from him. And so all through the night, you have king, the king of Persia, the king of the, uh, of the largest empire that was at that time, going on before the Lord and not eating, not doing anything but praying for the deliverance of Daniel. You know, what a God that is to bring the mighty ruler, really the, 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 ruler, the ruler of what would have been the most of the whole world at that time, brought him to his knees on God's man and in his behalf. That's what our God can do. Why do we limit him? Why do we say, oh, oh, what well, was me? We're in bad shape. The government's collapsing, blah, blah, blah. Hey, our God's still on the throne this morning. And you know what we need to do? We need to quit worrying about all that and just simply, simply find, hey, you know what? There's a little town down, down the road there, 20 miles. There ain't nothing but heathens down there. They don't even know what sovereignty is. Won't we go do something there? See, that's exactly what our God can do. When we're focused on Him and not focused on what the world has to offer and what the world is doing. 
verse uh, 19. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went, went in haste into the den of lions. And when he came in the den, he cried with a lamentable voice and said unto him, and the king, uh, and to Dan, with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king said to Daniel, O Daniel, the servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Now, I find this very interesting because he, when he signed his signet and initialed off on the punishment, he says, I know God can deliver you. And now he's down there, Daniel, are you there? <clears throat> Daniel, was he able to do it? See, his faith faltered when he's going to have to look in that den. Yeah. And sometimes we're in the very same situation, are we not? We're all good until the road meets the road. Where you might say, well, you know what? I just ain't going to do it. That's fine, Larry, don't do it. We're taking you to the jailhouse. Quite a different thing, right? Uh, and, and, and so we find here that he had spent that night in fasting and prayer, and he runs down to the tomb, and again, very indicative of the women as they went to the Lord Jesus' tomb on that morning, expecting a dead man, expecting rotting flesh as they could finish with aloes and myrrh, and finding an empty tomb. They didn't expect that. <laughs> And we don't expect God to bless us either, did it, do we? Yeah. We think we're beyond that in 2020. But listen, uh, dear friend, we're not. Our God's not changed. He's still in the soul-saving business. He's still in, in, in the business of delivering people from eternal hell. He still does that. And if I didn't believe that, listen, I'd quit preaching and go to the house and, 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 and just go on with the rest of the world. But I believe that he is still doing that every day. <laughs> then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that a wonderful way? The very thing that, that began his mockery and began his trial, O king, live forever. Daniel answered, you know what? You can't think that, <laughs> I wonder Daniel was just a little bit of a smart aleck. <laughs> the very same words. See, uh, God's able, isn't he? Uh, God's able. But I think Daniel was a little bit different than that bunch that was skimming off the national treasury. He really meant it. You're our king. You know, and as long as they're not contrary to the law of God, and they had let these Egyptian, I mean, excuse me, they had let these Jewish men go by their own diet, you know, as long as it's not contrary to the word of God, we can go with that. But see, there'll be a time coming when it's contrary. Whenever, whenever, hey, you can't do that anymore. You can't do that. Oh, that's a sodomite, big part of you. But listen, then we have to stop. But until then, the government's okay. And, and so we find that Daniel answered him. O king, live forever. Verse 22, my God had sent his angel, his angel. I think that's a very unusual wording there, don't you? Because, you know, the Bible says in the New Testament uh, that we all have our own angels. And they're our protector. They're our, they're, they're, they, they help us along the way. But in this text, it says that God himself sent his own angel to protect Daniel in that, in that situation. You know what? The only thing I come to that, and <laughs> I believe the Bible teaches this very clearly, there are some that angels that are stronger than others. There are some angels that have certain purposes and, and they don't cross over to a, a different area. But here, knowing the, knowing the work would be, would be uh, very, very difficult, he sent his own angels, go down there and get them lines Shut their mouths, lock them up, and, and don't let them touch Daniel. Now, you think about that, that is an amazing thing, but see, uh, lions have these things too. And apparently they were under control of the Almighty as well, because see, a, uh, uh, a lion can kill you with its claws. 
and, and, and he don't have to eat you to death. And, and so we see that these uh, lions were in perfect submission of the Almighty and delivered Daniel. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lions' mouths and they have not hurt me for as much as before him as before him innocency was found in me and also before thee O king I have done no hurt so he says listen I didn't steal your money then uh, was the then was the king exceedingly glad for him meaning glad for Daniel and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den so Daniel was taken up out of the den and no matter of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God can you imagine when they're pulling him up out of that hole and, and, and he's going, maybe going up on a rope and they're getting him up there and they began to examine in his arms and his back and it wasn't even a scratch on him. See, it's because he believed God. Yeah. You, do you believe him that much? Listen, it never ceases to amaze me. The most enduring part of your, of your existence is your soul and we're willing to, to trust him with that and not trust him with the... On a typical day. So I want you to see what became a typical day. What started out as counting money down at the treasury became a means to magnify God completely. To lift him up, to glorify him, to give him great praise and great honor. And that that there's opportunities like that in every day that comes our way. <laughs> And the king commanded and brought those men which had accused Daniel and cast them into the den of the lions, them and their children. You know, when the children become included in the judgment of God, it always scares me. Don't it, you? Be careful what you teach your children. And listen, most of the teaching isn't this is what the Bible says. It's taught on a day-to-day -day basis. This morning, it, it wasn't necessarily wrong and Donna told the belly to do something, put on a dress or something, get her hair pulled up, I don't know what it was. And she said, uh, okay. I said, no, 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 that's yes, ma'am. You don't need your, your mama an okay. And see, I wonder if I had let that slide Oh, that ain't gonna be too much. I'm busy, I'm pulling on Joey, I've got things to do. Uh, you go ahead and let that slide for about 18 years and you see what happens and you see what, what you come up with. And, 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 and so we find then as the Lord's people that our actions are very much impact what we do. And the king commanded, and, I'm sorry, uh, and they brought those men which accused Daniel and they cast them into the den of lions, uh, uh, lions, them, their children, and their wives. And the lions had mastery of them and break all their bones in pieces forever they came to the bottom of the den. In other words, they were judged before they hit the ground. <laughs> right? Now that, 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 and this was just a typical day in the life of Daniel, serving God, just waking up and saying, blessed be the name of the Lord, to be set in the night in the, day, in the lion's den, and no harm even coming his way, a typical day. Now, why don't we see that today? What do we do? We just ignore it. You know what? I got up this morning and Donna had fixed uh, bacon and something else for breakfast and, and my belly was full. See, God's only done a miracle, has it not? I was able to take a shower. Nobody had to help me. That's a miracle. I had, uh, and, you know, uh, I had a good place to come to church this morning and meet with God's people. Uh, you, you, can't, you can't begin to imagine how many people don't have that. Now we get on the hummy drove and we don't have about 10 or 12 left. <laughs> you know what, there, there's places where that would be a huge crowd. When you live by yourself and serve by yourself day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, 12 would seem like a crowd. See, 
It's all in how we look at it. Are we going to have the hummy drummers? Are we going to say, okay, well, it's, it's time to give up. We're done. No, no, you're not done until you finish your course. And I fully believe there's not a one of us in here that's finished our course yet. And you know why I believe that? I believe when you finish your course, you die. So we still got something to do, do we not? I want to serve him like Daniel did, don't you? I, I want to be exactly as faithful and, and just face whatever the problem is head on and continue to serve the Lord. And you know what? In the day of your trial, as it was with Joseph and the Lord Jesus, I mean, in the days of, like Daniel and the Lord Jesus Christ, they didn't have to say anything. And you know why? Their testimony spoke for itself. Mm -hmm. Wasn't anything to have to say, was it? 